Chris Paul, he's old. Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Uh, Crossover is brought to you by California Academy of Sciences. Every visit supports the Academy's mission to regenerate the natural world. Learn more and reserve your ticket at calacademy.org. Welcome in, Dan Dibley, along with Larry Kruger. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Okay, uh, read the schedule, Goo. We just got... uh, (laughs) You would have wore the shirt. (laughs) We just got... uh, uh Uh-oh. There's going to be that Steph Curry documentary. And Goo, of course, can't wait. He's getting goosebumps already. Oh, real he's quick. tingling for the Barry Get Bonds one two, okay. Larry. I'm which starting Stein, to not, tingle. He's not in on Doc. He no, no, likes no. The, the so, Arctic Docs. So to me, no, I no, feel no. like Curry's a guy who I don't really. So I, but I'm not like, oh, I'm not going to see that. Okay. No, Steiny likes not, documentaries about subjects that he knows nothing, and he feels that, like he knows about ninety three percent of the Steph Curry story. Correct. I'll speak for you. The I rest have of the way. five. I got you. I've, I said, okay, I'll come up with some guys. In the last five years, who were warriors that I would watch a documentary on, and with Jonathan Kaminga, I would absolutely watch a documentary on Kaminga. His travel yeah. from this land to, yeah. to yeah, man, and uh, doing it without his parents and the whole thing. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. no doubt. Um, Andres Biedrins, what happened? I said last to- five years. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> what yeah. happened to Andres at the foul yeah. line? Good taste, I have Juan though, Toscano Anderson you know I mean. on there too. JTA, because he's got a story. This is James Wiseman. Joan, 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 a tight, Jonas a Jonas slightly Jarenko. smaller story, yeah, but still you're following it. From Sweden. Well, 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 from Sweden. Uh, yeah, sure. What's up, gents? Uh, not much. Uh, you know, just uh, a show. Yeah, <sighs> thank you. That was just a shout out for my guy, Mark Willis. One, two, two. Dude, Dry I love one, listening two, to you guys. Two. I was telling Evan that the uh, Steiny one, two, two. I, I say that like all the time. I don't know now. where that came from. I don't even know why I love it so much. He was in a good It's mood like Bob yeah. Dylan's yeah. Lay Lady Lay. He doesn't, it's, he actually sounds good on that song. Yeah. He, First the time and only time. time. Yeah. yeah. He's awful. Eddie <laughs> Lee on Mount Bad Singer Moore. Bob Dylan will be up there too. No doubt. I saw Bob Dylan at Shoreline opening Uh-oh. for Blues Traveler and a few, <laughs> this is years ago. And he's got a full on suit on and he's sweating through his suit. Yeah. He's, uh, Norm I mean, Peterson, huh? Moses Malone. Wow. At one point. Patrick Ewing. <laughs> about, this is probably about I mean, 20. It was, it was like Tyler Walker kind of a sweat. I mean, it was it was big time sweat. I had him in my summer camp in uh, in Ross oh, there you back go. in the day. Yeah, The mean streets of Ross. Yeah, it's amazing yeah, when yeah. you got out. <laughs> you get caught on the wrong side of Lagunitas Boulevard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. Know, Shady Lane. There's hell to pay. All that. No drip drop. That hurts me. Yeah, so about Thank 20 you. years but ago, wait. and I walked out and I said, you know, I'm never going to go see him again. But he's your favorite. He never That's shared right. that. It can't be. He's terrible in concert. Oh, I mean, it was, it was about 20 years ago. Uh, yeah. It was about 20 years and ago. And I just walked wow. out. I'm like, you know, he doesn't engage with the audience. He just sing. He just sing. Like, you know, it's <laughs> wow. just. Everybody I'd must rather, get. I would rather listen to the uh, to the, to the CD or whatever. It, 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 uh, eight track. Anyway, the, the the whatever I forget the the name of the eight riff, track. but the riff that's on the Sopranos album from Dylan, awesome. I forget exactly which one it was. That's but it's not a, get get a gun. No, it's on there. Good. That's not Dylan. I don't think. No, it isn't. Yeah. I got I got to look. Nas it up. used it in one of the greatest songs ever. Yeah. Yeah. Can I share with you uh, what's going on in the Guru Meter and just in life, sure. Larry? I. You want to call it overreacting? I didn't like to pull CP3 trade. I'm aware. Okay. But I went home, did everything I had to do with the fam, thinking there's no way in hell. And I'm wrong. I know Draymond is not going to leave. But now I hit myself. I'm like, hold on. You're telling me the organization did this, and I believe it was to appease Draymond. So I brought up the word today, loyalty. Not money, loyalty. Kendrick Lamar. There's no before. There's no world we live on where Dre will turn his back on the Warriors and say bye because of dollars. Am I am I naive with that? Or I, Joe Lakeup is gonna not know. make it that to where we know we gotta if he leaves, Dre. It's a wrap. Who was the Michigan State guy who said the other day on uh, social media that Dre deserves over a hundred million and Dre liked it? Oh boy. You see that Steven no. S- Steve Smith, Mateen Cleese, the original no, was, Steve Smith. It was, it was not Magic a big Johnson. name guy. It was just somebody from Magic. Michigan State. Greg Kelser, oh, some young totally. guy from Michigan State said, "Draymond, you deserve over a hundred million dollars. You deserve the bag." And he's Draymond liked it. So of I mean, he did. yeah. No, I, I don't. How 
I mean, what it, I, 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 I love to look up on reference okay. sometimes. What are the, what's the career earnings of a guy? We what, just, what's, he's what do you think, south Draymond? Of Clay and Clay is no south doubt. of Steph. Okay, but Draymond's I mean, career is about one eighty, mm, I think one eighty, one ninety. And so he's way south of Clay because Ant has thrown one hundred eighty million at Clay already, probably. So the thing so, about shout out China Clay, and I yeah. guess this is, this is a little unusual, not that unusual, but as of this point, Clay, uh, Draymond Green has never taken a pay cut in his life because he was a second round pick. So he started at like four hundred, six hundred. 900. Then he got a contract. 4 million, 7 million, 11 million. Then he got the big deal. Like, and now this year, 27 5 would be more than last year. So I wonder if he doesn't want to come be, come below 27 5 to start because he doesn't want to, he's never t- taken a pay cut in his career. I don't think he's going anywhere as far as what dollar figure, how many years exactly, what the dollar figure is. I think it's going to, I think it's going to be between 25 and 30 a year for three years. That would be my guess. And I think Sacramento, the report this morning that they weren't, they're going after Kuzma is their pivot. Mm. You know, they, they dance with Draymond, but I think they, he's probably indicated to them that he's going, going back to the Warriors, or at least they've gotten that sense. And now Sacramento's moved on to pursuit of, uh, of uh, Kyle Kuzma. But I, I just think that the, um, you know, the Chris Paul thing, you got to go back to what if that deal wasn't made? Then what? Is Green coming back? Probably not. How does that affect Steph? How does that affect Kerr? Um, you know, this thing could have gotten could have gone way sideways if they didn't side with with uh, Draymond Green. I believe he leveraged it. I believe he leveraged wow. it. I believe that trade doesn't happen, and and he's you know, I think he I think he there's a lot of leverage there. I think that trade was made partially because of Green leveraging the deal. You guys don't. No, I do, and I still think he's leveraging it, which is why he's going to get more than thirty million Man, per. Even yeah. though I'm, I'm stunned. And Steiny makes a good point about him never taking a pay cut. He actually went from nine hundred and fifteen grand up to fourteen point three in that first deal. Oof. Fifteen three, sixteen four, seventeen five, eighteen five, twenty two, twenty two two. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Twenty four flat. 25.8 last year, and he would have made 27.6 if he would have taken the player option. So I don't think he's taken less than 27.6. Otherwise, he would have him. taken the 27.6. So he's going to get, I thought he was going to get about 3 and 85, 3 and 90. But you. the more I think about it, it might be 3 and 100. And if Sacramento is going to offer you 4 and 120, well, then. I think that he might sign a three with a fourth year player option to where if he wants to come back and play for 35 in his fourth year, he can or he can just flat retire. Because he said 15 years is what he wants out of his career, and he's 11 in. Mm. So he's only looking at four more years anyway, according to his own Draymond math. Wow. Interesting. So, uh, let me throw this at you because we were talking about injury and age. Um, can the Warriors really have a great regular season next year and then be solid in the postseason with Curry, Clay, Draymond, and Chris Paul? Those are four of their top six players, their ages being what they are. Like, no. Can they're they make a, it through the regular 35 season? 35 years of age there. That's so, 35 years old wow. on average. So and gave up a young twenty three year old, but he's twenty four. Who was who was totally broken, by the way, yeah. and, and they out of control. control. And the Warriors so, and the Warriors fast. hurt his value the day they signed him to that contract. I never but at the of same time, like now, how do you, by signing yeah. him to that contract, they made him tradable. If they didn't sign him to that contract, they couldn't really trade him unless they signed and traded him. But it would have been an offer that could have been matched by other teams. Or they, 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 could, they, they, they made him more tradable by signing him to a contract, exactly. not the contract. That contract was an overpay and devalued him, which is why they had to attach three assets to move him. Or was it hush money? It was one asset. What if he would have took his ball and went home and said, you guys ain't suspending this dude, I'm out. What if that would have followed the Warriors the whole season? So that contract to me was almost like, hey, Jordan, we love you. We didn't suspend him, but here. And he was like, you know what? I'm going to just go through with it. And it still was a nightmare. But I don't know how you feel like they devalued him. 
because they paid him way more than he's worth. Same reason that the Hawks yeah. just uh, moved off of John Collins for Rudy Gay because they paid him too much. When you pay a guy too much in a capped sport, you're devaluing him. Um, so, I mean, you're right, Dibs. They would they they got more because they tr- extended him. Period. But they giving him the money they gave him was too much. And I don't know how you guys feel about it. I think Poole's broken as a player. He loves that to well. do what Steph does, and he ain't Steph. And he doesn't like to do what he needs to do. And he's got a terrible reputation with the refs. And his game is to get to the line. I mean, that's. You know, talk about a guy who should have really cultivated a great relationship with the refs. This pout and stare mode that he's been in has is, is, is hurt his game. Yeah. I'm not ready to Dibs, write him off. Been, I, mean, no, I mean, he's a good player, but I, mean, I, I think like, he's was never in on him. No, I would never was. But he's more wow. fixed now than he is broken because he gets a fresh start. Oh, no doubt. He doesn't have to worry about Steph throwing his mouthpiece or Clay throwing Man. his hands up or Draymond knocking him out or Steve Kerr being mad at him because he's not playing the right way. He's immediately fixed by going but where he's going. I disagree because what he likes is he likes to take heat check threes and he shot 25% in the postseason. And what he doesn't like to do is is get bumped and take and and, and and you know go inside. I don't think he wants that physicality. I don't think he likes that physicality. Uh, and then he stares down the refs when he doesn't get calls. He's got a terrible he gets reputation a with them. them. Larry, I, I'm, it, Dib said this towards the end of uh, this past basketball season. I, I was a big advocate for JP. I could not and cannot defend the falling down, the stuff that you're saying. But on a good day, Larry, it seems like you're judging him on a good day, on a bad day. On a good day, he can get to the charity stripe with the best of them. Yeah. So I think he's taking that in his suitcase with him to Washington. But I got to back up. I think he earned that contract. With the, I know it was one year, and now we could, we'll could. we find out if it were a fluke, but Jordan Poole was a problem. And he was a, he was a perfect fit here. He could start. I could come off the bench. So you think that all was just... I don't, first of all, I don't, I don't agree with the premise. So I don't agree that he was a perfect fit here. He doesn't play well with your best player, Steph Curry. His, the greatest stretch of his career came when Steph was on the injured list, and he had the ball in his hands, and he could just... Go. I think I think Jordan Poole is best as a second division, uh, you know, second division team volume scorer. You know, like I, Washington. Yeah, what? exactly. He's perfect, perfect well, there. He'll score. He might lead the league in scoring. So he gets no credit. I'm but, just asking, Larry, if Stanley and I talked about it real quick. If he does lead the league in scoring. Are we going to say, oh, you get no credit because the team ain't winning? Like, when are we just going to celebrate the dude can get buckets? Yeah, Shea Gilgis Alexander. I, I, I just don't. I just think he was, he's, he, the Warriors <laughs> had a broken chemistry and a broken cap, and that trade helped help fix both their breaks. You're That's listening, what I'm you're listening to 95.7, the game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco and Odyssey Station. One thing that I, I don't understand the argument and, I hear it a lot is, well, if Jordan Poole's your one, you're not going to be very... Well, yeah, I know. Like, Washington will now try to go get a couple players yeah. better than Jordan Poole. This year, he's probably going to be the best player on the right. team. He's going to average 30 a game. He's going to shoot 42%, 33 from three. Like, that's what's going to happen. But if they can get another player better than him, well, then he's now a two. Well, now he just got better. Like... Like, he's not Steph Curry. He's he's never going to be Steph Curry. But Steph Curry doesn't have four titles if he doesn't have Correct. elite players around him. No doubt. Tell me one player who averaged more than 30 a night and was able to win a championship without other Hall of Fame caliber players. Mm. Even Michael Jordan had Scott Ty Pipen, and he had Dennis Rodman for three years, and he had Ron Harper, which we all want to gloss over, who is a borderline Hall of Famer. You'd be hard pressed to find any player. Allen Iverson would be the best comp, and they didn't win the championship, right. and he got to one NBA Finals. I guess Dirk, maybe. Yeah, Jason Kidd, Hall of Famer. Yeah, at, at his best, and he was carried by the pride of Puerto Rico, JJ Barea. Oh man, and I'm still <laughs> owed lunch but over then, that series. Why? Me. Because the guy who with whom I was working at the time, not JD, this guy. Uh, yeah, yes, it was it was a full stop sign. Look at they oh, got Captain stop going, sign still owes me lunch from 2011. But oh. go ahead, Goo. <laughs> no, I was just going to ask you about Shea. I think he's a great basketball player. He's amazing. Player. Oh, okay. He's but an it amazing like player. Like you were saying, because Oklahoma's not, I'm not winning. trying to throw Shea. 
That's a four. <laughs> All <laughs> I'm saying is, is he can average 31 a night for Oklahoma City, and the larger group of NBA people can look at it and go, good player, good for you. Damian Lillard, 20. <sighs> he averaged 30 a night last year in Portland. They stink. So it, does it really matter? Jordan Poole is going to average 27 a night in Washington. He'll be seventh in the league in scoring, <laughs> and they'll be 30 and 52. I'm happy for you, JP, <sighs> but your team's not going to be any good. Right, and the, the 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 question is, can those players, even Lillard, make it make an adjustment when they start getting, if they ever start getting good players? Because that's what Steph Curry also did. Is true. He played a certain way, and then Clay got better, and then he realized, you know, whatever. Three years ago, he had to score thirty two a game. That's what he did. Guess what? They were thirty nine and thirty three. Not not because he had it. It's because he had to do too much. He did it, but what I'm getting at is I'm more interested to see Jordan Poole take, can he have a bigger role than he had with the Warriors on a good team? Can he, can he, play, you know, can he be on a good team uh, going forward? I mean, we saw him, obviously, he was a key cog on a Warrior team that won a title, so that answered, that question's been answered. But the chemistry was wrong here. And then also his money on top, you know, on top of the other guys who were getting paid took this team to a level that Joe doesn't want to be at. So to me, I, I was surprised when Beal was traded f- for Paul. I kind of was surprised surprised the Warriors weren't involved in the three way de- three way deal there mm-hmm. getting Paul because in a lot of ways Poole's the ideal replacement for Beal. Beal's a volume guy. Uh, he's older. This gives them a chance to get a little younger and still have somebody score all the points. I mean, Jordan Poole's going to score a ton of points. Well, yes. How are the Warriors going to make up for Because I'm thinking Moody's going to take a leap, but how are the Warriors, right, currently constructed, going to. Who's going to pick up that slack? Well, that's what we're going to get into today because I personally, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but if they just. I love the draft. I love those two kids well, they drafted. But you just. Take those, you know, the kid at 90, 19, the kid at 57, and then some minimum guys, re sign Draymond Green, let's just assume for this discussion they are, and run it back. That's to me, that's not a title contender. Your your core's 35 years old. You got young up and coming teams oh, like man. Sacramento in the West. Mm-hmm. Denver's got the entire team in their prime. They got the MVP of the league. They're better than you right now. That's not a title contender. So I, I personally think we are going to see a monumental move in early July involving some big-name Warrior players. Or a big-name player. And we're going to play some sound from Larry Harris. That We're going to play the Larry Harris sound, and you can draw your own conclusions based on what he's saying. Larry and I have a little bit of a difference of opinion, but Larry's theory as to what might be coming at the end of this week in early July is fascinating because he and I are in agreement that if you just run it back, right. Draymond in, wow. two new vet mins, Dante and J. Mike out, you replace them with whoever, I'm whatever with vet mins you can replace them with, you're probably 45 and 37, and you're another, you're a five seed, and you're not going anywhere. But what if you made a bigger deal? Yeah, with a bigger boy, because it's got to be somebody's making a lot of chicken, mm. as we talked about, because the constraints, chicken. the financial constraints, Larry, who can even come at Lake up and be like, what are you doing? When he was like, I, you know I've done everything under the sun, but now there's con- they got rules for us now, Goo. I can't do stuff I want to do. Yeah. By the way, uh, Dante DiVincenzo has officially uh, ah. declined his player option, so he's an unrestricted free agent. The okay. deadline for that was Thursday, so he's doing that a couple days early. Yeah, I I guess it was a foregone conclusion, exactly. right? Exactly. I was hoping. I mean, yeah, he's right. Exactly. Man. He's gonna make a lot. He's gonna make double, maybe more. Yeah. The yeah, other thing is, yeah. uh, <laughs> well, I, I wonder. You don't I think wonder. so? You don't think he gets? I don't know, he might. He might. Three years, thirty million, something like that. See, that seems like a lot to me for him, but maybe, maybe. Like, I'm not saying you're wrong at all. I just. Ah. What'd you think of him? Yeah, he's all right. Because he kind of fell like off him. at the end. I like him. I mean, as far as he rebounds, he could, and Kerr said it in an interview, I think, on this station late in the year, I can put him in any configuration, and he can make it work. So he, to me, he's a, he's a really underrated basketball player. He, when you can play with a bunch of different guys with different skill sets and figure it out on the fly, I'm on the floor, what do I contribute? Sometimes I'm a facilitator. Right. Sometimes I'm a shooter. Sometimes I'm a rebounder. I was a little disappointed when he was out there and he needed to be a shooter he, that he couldn't shoulder yeah. the load. But I love him as a playmaker and as a rebounder. Yet to find but, a home. By the way, if if you're talking about the Warriors making a big move, 
the reality of the situation is we're really talking about one guy. Yeah. You know, you, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Well, yeah. Gotta be. Yeah. Well, they teased this, Donnie. Well, and we, and we can get into it here oh, because okay. there's a lot of meat on that bone in terms of not only would you or wouldn't you, but then you start talking about the player that you would get back in terms of Man. salary comparison, and you're talking about big-time names with big-time careers, but also some big-time question marks of their own. So do you trade your guy uh. for another guy? Do you trade the known for the unknown? I think it's fascinating because... Larry and I are both of the same mindset of if it is Steph, Clay, Dre, Wiggins, Kavon, GP2, and CP3 as your top seven, and then rookies and vet mins, uh, oh that to me does not feel threatening to Denver. But if you replace Clay with maybe a, a 6 9 vet or, <laughs> uh, <laughs> or somebody of that ilk, I do Whoa. you get better? Do you get worse? We're going to get into that. Yeah. Yeah. Going to be fun. Going to be a lot of fun. Also, we got the uh, Giants on the road. Uh, just about north of the border. Playing north good of ball. The border. Larry, Playing who good saw ball. this coming? I, I got Not my me. hand up. Not, Not me either, man. Now, Larry's I big man. Anybody, anybody coming up at three I has watched Yaz baseball stunk. in their yeah. lifetime yeah, yeah, has you. seen it coming. I thought Yaz was oh going to be bad. Goodness. I thought Wade was going to be bad. Me too. I thought they had no pitching. <laughs> I thought Kathleen was a weirdo. Three o'clock. Only one of those things is true. Eats crow. Humble pie with Uncle Larry at three o'clock. New information. Yeah, it's coming. Larry's mea culpa. And also Doc Pandia. At 4 o'clock, we'll go through all the injuries, including a look at Brock Purdy and what he's got going on in Jacksonville. And also, not quite a bombshell from the 49ers, but Albert Breer with a very interesting uh, thought about where the Niner QB room is. We'll get into that as well. Give Ponja an over-under on games missed from those four Warriors. See what I'm saying? He's a doctor. He's not a... uh, Prognosticator? Right. Come on, Ponja. Get in the game. That would be a <laughs> prognostication sensation. He's asking you to come up with the number. Yeah, with I'll, I'll come up with the number. Yeah, yeah without a doubt. <laughs> Thanks, Tiny. Good to see you. I appreciate you sticking and staying. Goo, you're welcome to stay as long as you want. I, I know you, you've got, uh, you know, probably things on the docket. Yeah, but. on the docket. Because I'm going to listen to you because I was here at 2.30 yesterday, which I loved. Yeah. So, uh, Larry, I'm going to let you slide in, and then we'll get it tomorrow. Good to see you guys. Okay. Yep. Yeah, Willard and Dibs right. coming up next. Get in, Bill.